Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 53 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where I'm getting some networky stuff, and maybe even a wireless doohickey, because I'm about to move everything we did last episode, and I'm going to do this mostly off-camera, FYI, but everything we did last episode, I'm moving into uh, the, the void dimension, or the mining dimension that we have set up, ready to harvest that world up into nothingness. Uh, so I've got my quantum bag with a bunch of things. I already broke apart the whole frame machine we made. I'm gonna rebuild it off camera, so don't worry about that. But what I wanted to do on camera was real quick get a wireless transmitter. And let's see. Uh, let's see, card, 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 card. Mm, what am I looking for, refined? Uh, the one with the ender pearl on it, I thought. Range upgrade, this guy. Well, I guess he doesn't have an Ender Pearl on him anymore. So I want four of these probably. Yes. So we could get upgrades times four. Let's see where you upgrades at. I know we've got them in here somewhere. Oh, we actually have a few range upgrades, so we're good. We'll use the ones we have already. Haha, <laughs> look at that. How cool is that? Let's test this out. So what I'm going to want to do is pop into my mining dimension where you can see I already started building this thing again off camera. But what I'm going to do is very simply pop down my network receiver. We're going to stick the wireless connector on it. We're going to add our four range upgrades. We're going to click it with our network card. And then we're going to pop home. And stick this network doohickey right back here with the other one. How cool is that? And then we pop this card in here, JAMD Mining Dimension. So FYI, that one's gonna be expensive in terms of uh, cost. Uh, so let's see, network transmitter times two. Oh, that's not bad, 64 off a tick, that can't be right. That can't be right, but maybe it is. Maybe it's because the dimension's not loaded. I don't know. It might be that the dimension's not loaded. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna sweat the small stuff though. And 64 off a tick is very much small stuff. But in theory now, I have access to my wireless network. <laughs> so if I need to craft anything while I'm out here, I don't have to pop between dimensions to do so. How cool is that? Uh, this is the series where Dyra says, how cool is that a lot? Oh, wait, that's every series. Never mind. I will, you know, just saying. Anyway, I'm going to get back to making uh, this system again. So back in a few once I've got it back to the way it was before. Be right back. All right, guys, we are back, and I'm currently right about wrapping up, I think, what needs to be wrapped up for this bad boy. Uh, it should be that, and then I'm thinking we'll have one of these here, and then my sticky piston facing away from me. And then the piston extension pole there. And then that should be cool. So I made this a little bit bigger than in my overworld, right? And this is what you do when you rebuild things as you learn a little bit more about what you might want, right? Like my original build wasn't big enough to accomplish making a lot of encased chain drives. So I figured I should do that this time, right? And then now you should be ready for the moving forward thing that I was all kinds of ready for. Do I not have any more levers? Did I use all my levers? I might have used all my levers. Luckily, I have access to my refined storage system from out here. How great is that? Ah, look how fast it is. Oh man, that is fast. That is, that's almost too fast. <laughs> that is fast. Holy cow, that is fast. I love it. <laughs> oh, I love how fast that is. It just grabs that thing from back there super quick. All right, guys, so now I'm playing around with this. And what I think I want to do is combine the pulse repeater, which is this dude. And I'm going to tell you to wait five ticks before proceeding. And then you're going to go, let's start with 10 ticks. and s Let's go with one second and see how that goes for how long it needs to basically do its thing, right? So if we try this, what this should do is five ticks after receiving a signal, it's going to just instantly pulse one little tick of redstone signal into this guy. He'll hold it for a second, and then he'll emit a redstone signal here for one second and then turn off. You ready? 
perfect. Perfect. It takes one second to move that thing forward at the speed that we've got it. So that is your uh, your deal, right? Boop and boop. That is cool beans. Okay, that is cool. So what we're gonna want now uh, is to pulse this off for like half a second and back on when you're no longer connected, right? So here's a question. Here's a question. Can I just stick a red thing torch like right on the back here? We're gonna find out. Will this turn off the torch? You ready? Yes, it does. Well, would you look at that? So what we wanna do is detect, okay? Uh, and you're gonna be in my way, so I might need to move you, but that shouldn't be too big of a problem to move-ish. Ugh, I don't wanna put you if you're not gonna be here. I might wanna flip him to the other side. You're going to the other side, chief. I'm gonna add a linear doohickey here. That's radial chassis. This is linear chassis. Boop, boop. Boom, that's cool. And everybody's an eight, nice. So then I can have you with my, this guy here. Let's also make sure that you're sticky, sticky. Want to make sure that you're sticky. Everybody's behaving, it looks like, so that's cool. Um, you can go there. I need you off so that I can hit you, and then I want you back on so that I can place you. And then we're going to want our lever here, because I don't want the lever interfering with the redstone I'm about to do. Okay? But your redstone signal now will come off here to here. Right, so basically I want that to cause this thing to turn on, right? So you're gonna be probably a repeater, I wanna say. Let's see how this works out, cool. Whoops, wrong. Let's make you a second. Yeah, so that's repeating there. I only want you to run right the one time. So I might want another pulse dude. Right, because uh, he'll emit a redstone signal when it goes away. So what I'll probably want is a pulse dude here. Like that, and let's say 10 ticks. So let's test this now, right? Hmm, it's still not doing what I want it to do. Because when you get when you go off, are you pulsing again? I actually want you to stay on, right? So I need to use that lever thing. Is basically what it needs to do. It needs to be that powered latch. So let's try that guy, right? So you're gonna be um, an adjustable repeater. Will go here. Okay. Well, actually, I probably want you to pulse first. So we'll pulse immediately on the back of this. And we'll see if that's enough. Let's see. Is that enough to trigger this to go, or do I have to have it going into the block? No, it needs to go into the block, so that needs to be one away. Wasn't sure. Worth a try, though. Worth a try, though. But yeah, you're going to need to be one away, right? So you're going to need to be your pulse repeater, and then your adjustable repeater. No, we want your lever doohickey here. Right? So that way... 
cool. That looks good, right? And then when it goes off, we actually want you Can I redstone off this side? I can. That's cool. I wonder if this is what I want to do. I don't need that no more. So uh, this is the reverse, actually, of what I want. Because I want the thing on. Is that right? It gets a little convoluted, I'll tell you. Let's do this manually for a sec. Ah, wrong thing. Okay. So we just need to play with the timing, I think. So on is retracting, right? So we want you to turn on. So we're gonna want a delay here. This is where the repeater needs to go. Adjustable repeater can go here. I want you to wait a second after that, right? And then you'll be the torch. And then you stay on, right? So if we try this now, What did I break? I broke something. I definitely broke something. Oh, I broke the piston here. Well, there's your problem. Where'd he go? There he is. So he's gonna go forward. And then not long enough, maybe? All right, guys, I think I've got it. By George, I think I've got it. So here's the deal, right? You're going to emit a redstone signal when the connectors are on. When they separate, which happens when I move this whole big platform forward, right? It turns on this torch, and then 10 ticks after the torch turns on, it turns off the lever because it's going into the side of the powered latch, which turns off this guy, which pushes the piston forward, and then one second after the torch turns off, which is 10 ticks after the lever turns off, it turns back on and pulls everything back. Does that make sense? So the reason for this delay that I found, which is what happened earlier, if this piston's in the middle of moving, when the whole platform tries to move, it breaks. So what you need to do is wait until this piston's done moving before this guy starts moving. Deal? So let's try it out, shall we? So push button. Platform moves forward, moves back, and then it has time for this piston to retract before this guy reaches out forward and grabs us again. So note my X coordinate, negative 225. Press button, right? That moves forward, boop, boop, negative 224. Press button, moves forward, moves back, boop, boop. Now negative 223. <laughs> it works, it works, it's working. All right, so that's a moving frame platform. How cool is that shenanigans? Because I feel like it's pretty cool, but I'm open to your opinions. I'm open to your thoughts. And that seems like a pretty nice inchworm drive, right? So literally just that can run forever. The timing is a little bit tight, but I've yet to see it break. I'm curious to see if it ever will, but so far it seems fine. This could be a little bit faster. Like part of me wants to expand this back platform a little bit so I can have two encased chain drives on here so that this pushes forward and back a little quicker. But we'll see if that's necessary. As it sits right now, I kind of like it moving a little bit fast, slow. Like this is almost too fast for me. That's almost too fast for me. Not complaining because you know Dyer likes fast, but almost too fast. So our next task then shall be as follows. What I want is a, boop, actually, no, I want 
you in my offhand again. Uh, what we want to do now is get drilling going, right? So we're going to start with a piston facing downwards, but I need it to be a sticky piston because we want it to go up and down. So let's make sure that this all makes sense, okay? Um, so what I'm going to have here is a sticky piston, but I want him facing downwards. Where'd you go? There you are. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, what I'm gonna do is have a chain drive in here for now, the redstone -y one, right? So that is a uh, gear shift is what it's called. I always forget the names of these things because you know me. You know me and names. They're a little bit, you know, dire derpy at times. But gear shift is what we want, okay? And I'm gonna hold off on you for a sec, but let's get, um, I'm gonna take you out of here, I don't think I, or do I need you in here? I'm not actually sure if I need these for this, but we'll find out, we'll find out. So piston extensions. And you're gonna wanna go, let's give you like three of these, or four, that should be fine, right? Now, if I hook you up, you're not going down yet, but if I give you a redstone signal, you in theory should. Aha! Yeah! Ba -ba 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 -ba. Now here's the question is, can we still inchworm with this going? So now that we've got a functioning inchworm drive, the trick is every time you make a big change, test your inchworm drive again. Because if we go and add 100 blocks to this thing and all of a sudden the inchworm breaks, we're going to be very upset when we don't know which block it was that we added that broke the inchworm drive. Okay, so test your inchworm drive regularly to make sure things are still working. And yay, they're still working. So what that tells me is I don't think you actually need sticky glue for your piston extension poles. It looks to me like you don't. So they are probably natively sticky. So that's cool, right? So we can just do that and then inchworm will still work. Yes? Beautiful, inchworm still works. And then you, and he's probably gonna grab, hello grass block. <laughs> Part of the way there. Now, what we want to do is have uh, some linear chassis, okay? And we probably want the sticky guys again. Uh, actually, I don't know if we need sticky guys again. Do we need sticky guys? I'm not sure. But no, I don't want you there. You're in the wrong spot. What I may want temporarily, just to get this going, let's do a five, a row of five for a minute. And I might need more linears than, no, linears. Start, bing, bang, boom. Okay, so you're gonna go here, here. Here and here. And boy, do I really need an ax. Whose idea was it that half these things needed axes to break? That's what I wanna know. All right, cool. And then in theory, I should be able to get my drills, which if I don't have any in here, I might have some in here. I got a bunch, right? Yeah, there they are. Cool. Okay. And then I want my chest. If I don't have one here, I've got one here. And you do need to be stickied. But in theory, the other things shouldn't need to be stickied. And let's I'm not entirely sure where I'm gonna, how I'm gonna do this, but we're gonna just experiment a little bit, okay? Now, I don't want you guys no more. So step one, let's make sure inchworm still behaves. Doesn't seem to have any problems. Inchworm still behaving, okay? So now, oh, what, what, hang on. See, this is why you test. Reasons to test. So let's sticky you. I might need to sticky you. Boop, go away. See, this is why we test, folks. This is why we test. And everybody's groovy now. The one thing I don't love is that you guys are sticky in between. I don't know if that matters or not, but we're just gonna do that. And that should be cool. All right, so now you guys should have no problem going down. 
and then back up. Mostly, except for that part. Okay, so I, I must have done a sticky wrong. Let's test that again. Sweet. Now we're at 135. So are we gonna run into a build height problem here? We might. We might. Because what I want is a copious amount of piston arms. And I guess what we want to do is see how high we can go. Because if we're at 130-ish, then it's like 260 to hit bedrock, right? Because we need a piston arm for every block space that we go down. So isn't there a limit at like 255 for build height, or is that no longer a thing? I guess we'll see. So if we go all the way up here, look at this bananas. Look at this bananas. Yeah, see? What's funny is he's placing. He's taking them out of my inventory, but he ain't placing them. Height limit for building is 256 blocks. Well, there you go. Today we learned. Yep, that might be a little bit of a problem, but we're going to find out. So let's do that. Are you going to have a problem here, buddy? You might be too high? I don't actually know. I guess we'll find out. He might be too high. I wonder if I broke something by... I don't know. We'll find out. By trying to place it? I'm testing. This is all in the name of testing. So I'm looking at, where's my looking at? I can target a block as 255s, right? So let's remove no tool. Wee stop. We stop. Huh. Why are you no longer worky? See, this is why you have to test almost every change you make you need to test to see, did I just break something? The answer will sometimes be yes. Huh, interesting. There might be a limit to how long those back poles can be. So my concern then, so here's my problem, is we might have trouble reaching bedrock from this height. See, we're learning something again. I mean, you're working, you're digging, and then check this out. In theory, oh, you're getting nothing. Oh, because the chest might have to be on this moving guy. That's right, because they are separate block entity things. So then what we want to have is the chest sitting like that, right? I wonder why he can't go down that far. I guess we'll find out, right? So you didn't get any of the things, but there should be a bunch of blocks here because if they don't go into their thing, then they're going to be, you know, dropped in the world. So let's bump this thing back up a little bit higher. Um, and like I said, the concern obviously is, huh, that's funny. I wonder if there's a limit to piston length. What we could do is the adjustable chain. No, not that guy. Where's that sequencer dude? Sequenced gear shift. Give me one of those. Give me a sequenced gear shift. Thank you. Auto crafting from another dimension. All right. So what I want you to do is piston 15 meters double speed forward and then piston 15 meters double speed reversed check might need to be opposite that huh 
Huh, still no. I was just curious how that would work out, if at all. So, I mean, there's funny things we can do about this, I'm sure. I'm sure. But let's go, let's go up to like Y level 200-ish, and that's where we'll start breaking. that too far again? I'm going to put you back to the regular gear shift. Yeah, too far again. I wonder if there's a limit to these, how deep they can go. I mean, it's funny, but it's weird because I wouldn't expect this to just not run if it's too long. That's cool, right? That's cool. But why you no want to go further than that? That's the question. That's the question. I'm going to break all these extension poles and we'll be right back. I retract my complaints about the axe tool because the ones that have no tool to break are even worse. <laughs> There's nothing that makes this any faster. Eight hours later. We're almost there. All right, guys, so change of plan, because there's another moving block that I forgot about. Um, and let's see. Ah, shift right click. That's a good way to break these things. That's a good way to break these things. I always forget you can shift right click with the wrench. The good thing about shift right clicking a frame or, or, or any object with a wrench is mostly that it goes directly into your inventory. So even though I didn't have a magnet equipped, it would go directly into my inventory. So that's a good call right there. Uh, sweet. So let's, instead of using the sticky mechanical piston, because obviously that's not working great, uh, let's use the rope pulley. I always forget about that one, because the rope pulley is cool. Uh, rope pulley from create. Oh, good, we have the stuff for that. Now, I have to remember how this works, because I don't know that I actually paid a lot of attention to this when I was learning this guy. Do you have a UI or anything, or what's the deal? Because this can go, I just checked, 128 blocks. So this gets me closer to how deep I need to go. Hello, sir. That is just beautiful right there. It's working. Now, you said you were going to go 128 blocks, but why'd you stop? You may have some kind of always place when stopped. Oh, right, because I'm still using my sequence gear shift. Haha, <laughs> well, there's your problem. Yeah, uh, for the time being, let's not do the sequence gear shift. Let's do the regular gear shift. And that should be cool. Now, with that being a redstone signal, it's a little bit slower, but that's okay, because most of the time it's going to actually be breaking. And I could speed that up if we need to. That's pretty cool. He should go all the way down to 128 now, which is close to bedrock for me, right? Because I started this this structure that I've got here at what? So like top of Y level is like 127 where I'm currently standing. Here's 128. Let's see what like the highest structure we can find. That's a 129. Here's a 131. So the reason I built it at the Y level I did is because I expected, um, yeah. So there's a config option you can change if you want to, but I'd like to avoid doing that. Um, where is my piston block now? I got lost. I'm lost. I'm lost in my mining dimension. There he is. Hey, buddy. Now you should be going deeper. Hey, don't be sticky. I heard it break, so that's what's important. So are you like full or something, or is there a reason you stopped? I'm not quite sure why you stopped. Did you break? What happened here? I think I broke it. I think I broke it. What happened? Why'd you break? I don't have a good answer to that question. Alright, I fixed it. 
Uh, breaking this block and letting the whole thing stop altogether seems to have solved that problem. So if it ever gets stuck, just just flipping the lever makes it go one way or the other. So you want to stop spinning it completely, and that should make a difference. So that's cool. So you guys are going back to working now? Yeah, you are. Nice. All right. I'm going to keep an eye on this for a minute, see how it works out. But I suspect we're going to be in good shape here. I mean, it's doing a good job, which I like. Um... I do like, I do like. So my thoughts are, if I want to hit bedrock, which I kind of do, I really want this thing to be mining at like Y level 128. So there's some things we could do. Uh, one thing we could do would be to lower this guy to about 128 and then put drills on the front of him. So as he's moving forward, if he runs into any terrain, he breaks it, it's an option. It's an option. I'd have to adjust my timing here because breaking blocks takes time, but that's not a big deal, right? Like, that's pretty cool. And Rope Pulley's, like, doing a good job. Good job, Rope Pulley. And no need for a giant thingy up there? Like, very yes, thank you. Very, very yes. I wonder if I speed you up if you'll, if I give you, like, another sequence gear shift and encase chain drive. Would you break blocks even faster? I don't know the answer to that question, but I would like to know the answer to that question, see? I don't know the answer to that question, but I would like to. And that's, that's experimentation right there, folks. We'll see. Uh, I'm assuming it would be able to move faster. I'm not sure if it would drill faster. And that would be, oh wow, we actually get pretty darn close. Because we're at Y level 11 at this point. Like, we are definitely hitting diamond tier. Look, look, diamonds. I got diamonds. This has been a successful endeavor. Actually, yeah, not yet. All right, so that got me down to Y level 6. So, I mean, is it the end of the world if we don't go all the way down? That's not, that's not, that's one, two, three blocks away from bedrock. Like, that is not a big deal. I could probably move him down one or two Y levels without having to worry about a drill. Maybe. Because um, if I'm looking at you, you are at Y level 132. And we've got, this guy's 127. So I could move the whole structure down. This is 130. I could move it down at least one or two more blocks. And I don't think I'd run into anything. And that would be kind of, that would be pretty darn close. So if I moved everything down one or two blocks, I don't think that would be a big deal. And that would be cool. And now that you're done, let's pull you back up and make sure forward momentum still works. And like I said, I might try another encased chain drive here. If I wanted to do that, right? Because the faster this spins, the faster it's going to move it up and down. And I feel like that would be worthwhile to do, right? Improve a little bit of speed. Let's make sure that you guys... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know why the rendering isn't working. But I'm going to bump you guys up to 12 because I might move this forward a little bit. We'll see. But what I'm going to do is break you. Break you. Okay, and then I can have sequenced gear shift. Oh, I put it in my offhand. I'm like, what happened to my, what did I do now? You can tell it's getting late for Dyer. He getting derpy. Uh, no, not sequenced gear shift. Encased. Chain drive. I don't know if I have one or not already. But I do now. And you're a regular chain drive, right? So these guys will connect. Sweet. So I'm just going to make him a little bit faster. Cool. And then we can go U. And then we can have the gear shift. And then we can have the rope pulley here. 
because it really doesn't matter where your roll pulley goes. Cool. Up, oh, wrong thing. Sequence gear shift, no. Regular gear shift, yes. See how much faster that goes? That's cool. We might be able to get this a little bit faster. I'd have to measure, but I don't know how much faster it can go, but yeah, that is pretty cool. So once this guy's all the way up, we're gonna try one more inchworm forward, and then we're gonna see if it breaks blocks faster with the faster spinning. All right, so inchworm forward, please. Don't break. Oh, something broke. What broke, friends? Hey, look at all the things we got though, huh? How great is that? All right, something broke, and I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but something broke. We're gonna have to futz a little bit. But this is how, this is how building these, oh, here we go. Yay, and you're all groovy? Yes, I think it might have been the lack of uh, stickiness there, right? So then I can do this, and you're gonna go down. That does seem to be breaking faster, right? Am I crazy or is that breaking faster? That does seem to be breaking faster. I should get a speedometer here and see how fast it's currently going. Let's do that, right? So, speedometer. And a little compass action. Let's see. I want you to come up for a sec. So I'm told that the braking speed is dependent upon this. So where are you at right now? You're kind of maxed out, aren't you? Do I have my goggles? He might be, he might be maxed out. 256 RPMs? I'm, can I do more than that? I think I can do a little bit faster. Yeah, I just double checked and this is the configurable max. So that's literally the fastest we can break. But that's not bad. That's pretty good. That is cool. I like that a lot. So we're super close to having a very reliable frame machine here. Um, we're gonna wanna handle when this chest gets full. And we're also gonna wanna handle extracting from said chest, but I think we can handle that. All right, so I'm gonna call this wrapping up point for the episode, but I think we've got We've got something here, right? Am I wrong? I feel like we got something here, right? So what I can totally do, by the way, is have an ender chest here. I'm gonna do this real quick, right? Um, just a vanilla chest real quick, right? White, white, white ender chest, which as a reminder, uh, anything that goes in here gets sorted, okay, immediately. So now if we got ultimate logistical transporters, Right, and we did something like this. And I probably also want you, I want you stuck to the bottom, right? That's an important bit. I don't actually want you stuck there. The side where the stickiness is, is important. So I want you to stuck to the ground, right? And then we can use our mechanism extractor dude. Let's take this off my hand for a sec. That's cool, right? Now watch, when I send him down, he's gonna lose his connection, he's gonna get some stuff, but then when he hits the top, he should reconnect and start extracting again. Ha-ha, ha-ha, how cool is that? See? Boom, start extracting again. Ho-ho. And then, test inchworm. Did you not move? Inchworm! Why did you break all of a sudden? Hmm. I need a way to visually recognize when stuff ain't being pushed properly. The only blocks we added since our last inchworming session were those, right? I believe so. Mm -hmm. Why you no work? You were working five seconds ago. Wait, I have an idea. I have an idea that might be the problem. Where's that pulley again? Oh, 
always placed when stopped. Yes. Place only in starting position. Place only when anchor destroyed. Place only in, always place when stopped. I think that's fine. So let's see, are you gonna let me move you again? No, why are you being a little mean about that? You should actually be working. I don't know, I'll play with it. I'm sure I broke something. It might be this, it might be him. Maybe he doesn't, I did, that's one thing I changed, right? We'll see. Eh, I'll figure it out. I think these guys I changed, maybe? Maybe? But we'll figure it out, right? Uh, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will come back next time. It might be... It might be him. I bet it's him. Hold on. I bet it's him. I think I figured it out. Uh, adjustable chain gear shift. Yeah, we need the stickiness on the bottom. Remember I said stickiness matters? So we need that stickiness on the bottom. And then the chain... The encased chain drive. Boom. Now the lever. Boom. Now he'll move, right? Right? Mm, why not? That actually should be working. I don't know. I'll play with it. I'll play with it. For now, don't play sign it off. It might be this. Hold on. It's this. Hold on. I. Right. One more try. And now you'll move. Yes! I did it! I did it! Cool. And then I'm going to, just for giggles, I'm going to, every five seconds, I'm just going to be like, and now Daryl 20 signing off. Cool. All right, one more time. The stickiness is important. Where you put those sticky glues is really important. And now go. And by the way, this can definitely be a lot longer. I'm just saying, which we'll see next episode because it's very, very super extra triple wrapping up point. So Direwolf20 for reals wrapping up. Uh, you didn't get pushed. Hmm. That's interesting. That's interesting. I'll toy with this a little bit. If this doesn't work, there may be another piping system that I can use, right? Uh, but wrap it up, point down, sign it off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Coming back next time. Gonna figure this out, I promise. One way or another. If it's not you, it'll be somebody else. All right, guys. Take it easy. Oh, yeah. See, he doesn't want to get moved. Yeah. He might have, like, a no-moving rule. We'll figure it out. All right, guys. Take it easy.